Yo, YouTube, you want a game on Linux? This is the part where you fall down and bleed to death! Okay, so... This, um... This case right here, I'll try to, like, I don't know, pop it up here somewhere on the screen. We did a previous video where we actually built a computer in here. And it's actually a pretty nice case. It's pretty cheap, unfortunately. This, uh, this plastic is scratched super easily. And I was planning on... you, or We're going to use this as our Linux gaming machine. So... So I only have one 8 gig stick of RAM here. So I'm going to actually swap this to a, to a 2 stick for a total of 16 gigs. And then over here on the SSD, I'm too lazy to dual boot. So we're going to swap this drive out for a fresh 1 terabyte stick here on the NVMe. Then once we have all this spruced up, we're just going to toss a Linux Mint on here for the operating system. Okay, we have our install media stuck in there. I don't have a separate monitor currently for this, or are you just using the capture card to look at everything? Perfect, we are booting. Wonderful, I'm gonna bring this over here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and, and do our um, install of Linux Mint, which is what we're gonna be using on this desktop um, to game. So go ahead and hit enter. And this will probably take, I'm not too sure. It, for the last two computers that we've done this on, it's taken about 10 minutes. But um, with this being a little bit of a better um, CPU and more updated hardware, um, <laughs> we maybe go pretty quick. Okay, that was um, significantly quicker than I thought that would be. And holy buckets, our um, DPI on this mouse is absolutely insane. There we go. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and do our regular install. Just double click up here. Should think for a moment. And after the spinning wheel of doom decides what the heck it's going to do, We'll, uh, we'll continue from there. Okay, so we do want English because uh, that's the language I speak. All right, we have Linux Mint installed, and I want to see how seamless a gaming experience this is going to be. And I want to see if there's anything that I would consider to be a huge inconvenience when running games. So, um, let me grab Steam from the Linux Software Manager. And this is going to take a hot second, so we'll up the cache, figure out the cache stuff for whatever's going on here in Linux land. And then, after a few minutes of me farting around, waiting for Steam to install, and me getting logged in, because, let's all be honest, I'm not typically entering my Steam password on the daily, let's get some games downloaded and see if they run. So immediately, I've already run into an error, a problem, whatever. I can't get any games to launch. I think this is more of a user error problem, so when I installed Linux, it just installs the basic stuff to get the, the system running. I didn't do any updates. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the software manager in Linux Mint here to update the software. I want to do it this way just because if someone who has only ever used Windows comes along and doesn't know how to properly use the uh, terminal or command line, I want to see if they can do it themselves without having to do anything special. So we'll get this all downloaded, and I'm assuming at the end of all this, we'll have to do a restart. So we'll probably speed up some uh, some of the footage as we go. So the biggest complaint that I hear is that Linux doesn't 
have a good anti-cheat, so competitive games are no-go. But let's start here with Marvel Rivals. It runs perfectly, as far as I can tell. Marvel Rivals is even blowing my favorite game, PUBG, right out of the water. This is the first round of this game that I've ever played, so if you slow down the footage, you may notice I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. But the game ran smooth, there was no stuttering, and the only thing that I felt like was kind of an issue is that it took forever for the shaders to load before the game itself would load. Other than that, I would say Marvel Rivals runs absolutely fine. So if you're looking for a fun, competitive multiplayer that runs on Linux, well, this might be your game to check out. So as of writing, I'm unaware of any good FPS monitors that work well on Linux Mint. So if any of you know of one, please let me know. But for right now, the built-in FPS counter here on Steam works well enough for us to get a good sense of what we're working with here in Medieval Dynasty. Since we're looking at more of how the game functions versus how well my Pleve in RX 6600 is, I'd say this game works completely fine as a builder survival game here on Linux. I'd suggest this game to almost anyone who's looking for something a bit more casual that can be played at more of a leisurely pace. So I'll give Medieval Dynasty two thumbs up for working just fine on Linux. Next up, we have the GigaChad of software that you can download from Steam to give yourself some freaking awesome backgrounds that move, shimmer, and make you feel like you're back in your parents' basement playing Halo 2. Introducing Wallpaper Engine. And it doesn't work. Or at least I couldn't get it to work. Maybe someone can put down in the comments what the heck I was doing wrong. But for the life of me, I couldn't get Wallpaper Engine to project any wallpapers onto my desktop. I was, however, able to change my desktop to whatever the heck this cool looking thing is here that comes baked in with the Linux Mint software. So sadly, Wallpaper Engine, you fail. Okie dokie, let's check out this monstrosity of a spaghetti game and see if I can satisfy your factory. Yes, it's satisfactory. The game runs fine as far as I can tell, with no issues here on Linux Mint. But make sure to check back here in a few weeks because we'll have an upcoming video on if we can do cross-play between Linux and Windows here in Satisfactory. If we circle back, looking for another competitive shooter game that isn't developed by Steam or Valve, we find ourselves Farlight 84. I like to think of it almost as an Apex Legends knockoff. I've spent many an hour playing this battle royale, even though at some points the Steam FPS counter in the upper corner did say the game was stuttering, supposedly, I never really noticed it and still managed to pull off a win. So, if you're looking for a battle royale that's fun and goofy in all the right ways to play on Linux, well, heck, you're in luck. Try out Farlight 84. Now, one would think that Oblivion Remastered should work fine on Linux since it doesn't have any anti-cheat or weird Windows requirements. If that's what you thought, then you were right! Nothing beats some good old-fashioned nostalgia like having some better graphics on a game that I played back when I was a teenager on my Xbox 360. Oblivion Remastered runs absolutely fine here on Linux. Before we talk about our final game, make sure to subscribe and share this video with a friend as I strive to get 500 subscribers here on YouTube. Now, PUBG is my favorite game that I've been playing currently with friends. And it just straight up doesn't work on Linux. I had a feeling that it wouldn't be able to load into a match, but I thought it would at least load the game, but it doesn't. It just sits there in Steam and tries to figure out what the French toast it's trying to do. And failing fantastically while it does it. Thanks YouTube. Don't forget to check back for more and make sure to like and subscribe.